Hello and welcome to the Coon Hunting University Podcast. This is your host, Tyler Duncan, and like always, class is in session. Hello and welcome back to the Coon Hunting University Podcast. So today we have a very special guest, Mr. Chance Parker. Now Chance helps manage Red Creek UKC Club, Wiggins PKC Club, and also Lumberton PKC Club here in Mississippi. So Chance has a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience managing and starting up clubs, and he's also assisted a couple of other clubs in getting started up. So I believe he'll give some great insight into all the things that go into that, Rams, and maybe some fundraising for your own club if you plan on starting one. So y'all just sit back and enjoy, and here's Mr. Chance Parker, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so Chance, would you like to introduce yourself to the people and tell them a little bit about yourself? My name's Chance Parker. I'm from South Mississippi. I don't live too far from Tyler here. I've been in the coon hunting probably 15, 16 years. I started when I was a teenager in high school. I haven't steadily done it, but I've done it on and off. And this last go around, I've I've been involved with several uh, coon clubs and helping those guys with those. Yeah, Chance is my neighbor over here. He don't live about a quarter of a mile from me. What's some of the major differences that you've seen between running a UKC club versus like a PKC club? You boil it all down, it's still coon hunting. Are the rules different? Yes. Some people will say that UKC is more suited for them. Some Some's going to say PKC is more suited for them. But when it when it's all down to its core, it's, it's still coon hunting and, and competition. Biggest thing is, is, is rules. PKC has a lot of weeknight hunts. Uh, that's something UKC usually don't do unless it's a bigger hunt. Most of your little local PKC hunts run during the week. Uh, our ones around here, Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, and we have some on the weekends. Our, our UKC hunts are usually on the weekends. The PKC during the week, I mean, those are awesome to me, easy to hit, and just my opinion. I mean, I know I'm trying not to interject it, but yeah. So... If I want to go about starting a PKC or UKC club, what are some things I need to do? I'd really think it over is what I'd do. Uh, make sure that's what you want to do. I'm just joking there. It, it's it's fun. The first thing that I would think about is is what group of people am I going to have around me? That's, that's what's going to make everything go. Of course, you can start one by yourself, but it's going to take, make, take people to, to make it go. Uh, there's no way a man can take in entries and and set up scorecards and judge and guide all the casts. It won't happen. First and foremost, I'd see who my support system's going to be. Once I found that out and seen that there was enough interest in the area, I would try to figure out where I was going to have it. Uh, get a spot nailed down, and the next thing I would do is 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 consider your woods. How far away from the clubhouse am I going to have to take cast? A lot of these local clubs, you don't particularly want to take them too terribly far. Uh, you want to kind of stay local. The biggest problem in South Mississippi is we have we have a lot of woods, but it's not too great of woods. So that could be challenging at times. Yeah, so that will bring us to our uh, another question. So have any of the clubs that you dealt with, obviously not, you haven't, dealt with any of the detrimental land loss like all the everybody else it seems like has um, nationwide for many coon hunters it's a real big problem yeah we're blessed here we uh we have tons of public land but it, we have it, it's not the greatest public land it's uh thick woods and thin coons in a lot of places there's some better than others but as far as running into things that other states made uh, here in Mississippi, we, we, we have been blessed with the, the amount of public land we have and access to it. The only problems we run into is what time of the year. Uh, during turkey season, a lot of the land it isn't accessible. A lot of the public land isn't because of uh, the law of no running dogs or anything like that during turkey season. You still have national forest land, but it's not a smaller amount i would guess you would say now in the state of mississippi if if you do draw a cast out you can still utilize that wma land correct you just have to get a permit for it for yeah. a cast mm. during turkey season you cannot it the permit does not cover that okay. so so and we actually run into this this year i went to get a permit for a hunt it was during spring turkey season and 
uh, I received an, a phone call saying that they wouldn't issue it because it was during turkey season. Well, in the past, that's never been a, an issue. And, it, and it's, I was always under the impression that if you got the permit that covered, you was able to utilize any land you wanted to. Well, that's not so. Uh, what the permit really helps is is out state hunters when they come into the state. You can't expect all of them to have a, a Mississippi hunting license, so that covers them whenever whenever they're out on a cast. But that permit does not cover WMAs. It covers national forest land and private land during turkey season or during any time of the year. But during turkey season, it doesn't allow you to hunt WMAs. Okay, but you can still hunt your private land, yes. and you just can't kill the coons. You're not going to kill the coon in a competition hunt anyway. Well, it's, yeah, you, it, you can't do that in any comp hunt that I know of. I'm sure there's a lot of turkey hunters that wish we would kill more. So, Chance, do you feel like attendance has went up or down in the last five years, not just at your clubs, just from your observation in general? I've seen in some clubs that go up. I've seen in some clubs that go down. Sometimes it's seasonal. A lot of people don't like to be out there in the summertime. You might see greater attendance in the wintertime around here. The PKC clubs seem to be doing better the last the last year. I've seen greater attendance at them. The UKC clubs is holding steady, I guess you would say. But I foresee UKC clubs getting more attendance with all the new things they're offering, the Tournament of Champions and stuff like that. But it, it varies. I mean, it's, it's very... Yeah, it seems like with the PKC clubs, I know... The ones I've been to with you, I mean, you show up during the week and you might have eight dogs. Yeah, you know? yeah I mean that's yeah. that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it, it's um, you never know. You never know. Uh, there might be a group of guys running for a truck ticket. There might be. Oh, there's a lot of things going on. You just you never know. And that helps promote it too. You know, as far as people, I mean, they come from all over just go to a Tuesday night yeah. hunt, just yeah. chasing a truck ticket or you know trying to get into the state team. Yep. So, what are some of the major challenges? As far as running your own club and uh, acting as master of hounds in a UKC hunt, and just give us a rundown on all that. The biggest challenge I've faced in the past year is um, time. I had a child back in August of last year, and it's been hard to hard to go to very many hunts. And I I think with everybody's schedule, that's that's going to be one of the biggest things is is finding the time. If you have a good group of guys around you, which I've been blessed to have, uh, it's it's not that makes things a lot easier. They help shoulder some of the weight, and it's it's not as bad on one person. If a person don't have that, they're they're going to run into more difficulties than than what I've seen. Yeah, so you know, I was thinking it'd be funny to do a podcast some coon hunters' wives and see. You know, their reactions. The other night, I was mock interviewing Lakin, and, and I said, "So, what do you think about coon hunting prior to?" meeting me prior to knowing me she said i didn't even think people did that no more so would you support it you know back then she said yeah i'd probably support it so what about now she said no <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah she said, she said, you'd pick coon up over me every time you know so but that that's not the case when you got a kid you know what i mean you got other things and i i know that has a uh, cut into your time but it's a blessing it really is yeah you know, it really is and and i hope one day that he'll he'll enjoy it as much as i do and be better at it maybe hopefully I mean that ain't saying much. He ain't got he ain't got a, a high bar to shoot for yeah. there, but hopefully you enjoy it and love it. So, acting as master of hounds that takes a lot of time too, especially in UKC, and you don't get anything out of. I mean, you get the fulfillment of being a part of the club, but I mean, as far as you can't you can't hunt, right? Oh uh, no, not as master of hounds. You you're not supposed to have a dog in the hunt that's under your name as master of hounds. As a hunt director, you can slide by and, and have a dog in the hunt, but as far as going out in the woods, unless they've changed something pretty recently i haven't you're you're not supposed to go anywhere you're supposed to stay at the clubhouse and that can be challenging that can be that's tough sometimes sitting there you know but like i said i've got a good group of guys and we've we've shared that responsibility and and it it hasn't been on one person yeah. and anybody that's looking to start a club or, or wanting to want to maybe help run one you're really not doing it for yourself. You're providing a service, and it's a thankless job. You're not going to get very many pats on the back. You're not going to get very many praises. But if you screw up one time, you're going to hear about it. My wife has said sometimes that I'm crazy for even fooling with it. But I enjoy it. I love it. And that's just part of it. I guess I could be doing worse. Yeah, I mean, you do a great job with Master Pounds, too. I mean, and it, it takes, it really does take somebody that's really dedicated to the club to be able to do that. And I think that's one thing people should think about when they're 
you know, not only if you're swimming starter club, but when you go to a UKC hunt, you know, and think about that guy that, you know, he doesn't have a dog in the hunt. You know, he's doing it for the community, you know, for the club. And people really need to sit back and thank that guy. Well, it, it, and I'm not saying this for, you know, praise or thank yous or any of that stuff, but what I would like to see is, is, you know, in this day and age with the social media like it is, if somebody has a bad experience and the first thing they do is get on there and start typing and say, hey, this, that, and the other. And, you know, I just sit back and wonder how many times have those people actually helped run a club or been a part of that. Those people don't, you know, putting on the show, they're not they're not asking for anything. They don't, in in most cases, they don't, they're just doing it because they enjoy the sport and want to see the sport kept alive. And like me now with a child, it's even more important to me. I want to. I want him to be able to enjoy it, and and it's going to take people that, that don't get their feelings hurt easier, and and can stick with it to keep it going. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. And it's it's seems like that's something that UKC might need to go and reconsider. I don't know. You know, I, I feel like that is a that kind of hurts their clothes. Have to find somebody to do that. Well, I think it's it's been talked about in the past, but I'm not not 100 percent sure it's how far it's went. I hadn't really kept up with it too much. Uh, we don't have very many UKC hunts and more. Mainly slams, huh? Most clubs that I see, and ours included, have, have went to the slam hunt so format. Let's, let's bring me another question. What's the difference in a slam UKC hunt and a regular UKC hunt? Well, in a slam UK, UKC hunt, there's money awarded to the winners. Uh, in a regular hunt, there, you don't you don't get any money you just get a the club chooses to give you a plaque you get a plaque or or they might have a a prize for a high scoring dog or or something like that but usually it's up to the club what you get if it's just a regular ukc hunt yeah so that bring us talking about raising money how do, how do you, I mean, i've started my own club or i want to be a member of a club and i'm thinking about what are some ways i can raise money for that club to be able to do other things Put uh, on there, bigger hunts. There, and, there's several yeah. different ways to do that. You can, you can raffle off lights. You can raffle off collars. Um, you know that can be very profitable for you. Um, not only that, you can have Calcuttas at your at your hunts. Maybe have a 50 percent payback. Give 50 percent back to the high score dog or whatever, and the club keeps half of it. What's a Calcutta? A Calcutta is basically an auction on the dogs. So you auction the dogs off. But you're not selling them. You're not. You're, you're no, auctioning no, them off. No, to, no, no, yeah. no. You're, you're buying. You're buying that dog for the night, essentially. But you're just buying him to to be able to win. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You're you're buying him. You're buying his score. What you're doing is you're saying, "Hey, I'll buy this dog for X amount of dollars in the auction because you think that it might come back with a high score of the night. If it comes back with a high score of the night, you will get whatever part of the cow cub." Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So pretty much just going through raffling and stuff like that is how you pretty much raise your money? Okay. And not only that, I mean, if you have a member memberships, yeah. I mean, once people pay memberships, that's going to be that's going an added boost to your, to your club. So what about finding a place to host my club? Any, any tips on that? No. no. <laughs> I have no idea what, what to tell you on that. Like I said, I've I've been blessed to fall in with guys that already had that sorted out. So it it's helpful if you you know there's a lot of community centers and stuff like that around. Sometimes they you know it it's hard to work out a, a schedule for a community center. So that's something you got to think about. Uh, that would take years of planning almost to set down dates for a community center. Now, what are the difference in a hosting place versus UKC versus PKC? You know, because I know PKC, you can kind of just meet, meet up. up. Yeah, yeah. That, that's it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, you can you can meet up. You can just have places to meet up, especially on your weeknight hunts. And I guess essentially that's because they're you know you might not be dealing with a bunch of dogs and a bunch of hunters. But if you want to have a bench show and stuff like that, you have to have an area for like in a UKC. Yeah, you know, yeah. You'd have to have an area to be able to show yeah. your dog. What are the tips you'd give to a guy that he's already you know got his place found? He's he's got his group of buddies. What are some more tips that you'd give to him and his group to managing their club, running their club? I would think about, hey, where am I, where am I going to take these people? How close am I located to the woods? Where am I going to? Where's my guide? Guide's going to take them. Uh, how far is that going to be? First thing I would do is just try just regular hunts, not get any too big with it to start with. 
just try it and see how it works out. Uh, everything seems to be working out. You could probably move up to, to bigger hunts or bigger, you know, bigger inch or feet hunts. Uh, I know on the PKC side of things, you got pro classics and legacy hunts and stuff like that, and you can move up to something. Really, that's all I could tell anybody is is try it and see what it see what happens and and go from there. Man, well, you shared some great information here tonight, and I really do feel like it's going to help some people. And but you have anything else to add before we log off? Before we sign off? Anything? No, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come on this. Uh, well, we appreciate you coming on here. <laughs> We hope it does good for you. I know uh, I know you've been in talks with a lot of people. I'm excited about seeing what's uh, going to happen in the future for you. Yeah, me too. And I, I really, like I said, thank you for coming on here. And man, it was a great episode and great interview. You did great. And I appreciate y'all listening. Thank y'all. Have a great day.